I hope you can see this. So basically this is a cell and you will be told to identify this. So if you see such a cell, you look at the aura rod, that's the one that will show you what the cell is. So if you're told to identify the cell, which cell is it? So you can write your answer in the chat. Myelo site. It's a myelo blast, not a site, because it's the immature form. Okay, yes, myelo blast. Mm. Then structure showed by the arrow. Most likely they'll point this arrow. So this is a an aura rod. State two cytochemical stains that can be used as an as ancillary test or to improve the diagnosis. So we have Sudam black B, myeloperoxidase, and esterases. You remember the, the table I had shown you where these are the positive ones, and then the periodic acid shift was positive for LL. Yes. Next question. Which of the following tests indicate two conditions that may give abnormal results? Thrombin time, prothrombin time. So, um, can you write on the chat, I see. Um, I've seen a question um, for this. Someone is asking, so periodic acid shift can't be an answer. No, if it were ALL is when periodic acid shift is positive. And this is ML, so it will be negative. So we're looking for the cytochemical stains that will show positive for this cell. Um, so thrombin time. I'm seeing people say thrombin liver disease. Liver disease, hemophilia, DIC, liver failure. Yes, so hypofibrogenemia, DIC, heparin therapy, and um um liver failure then prothrombin time so prothrombin time is pt you said pt is playing tennis you play outside so extrinsic pathway you look at the extrinsic pathway so factor this is five six seven factor seven deficiency warfarin liver failure so liver failure would be an answer in both because liver the liver synthesizes all the factors so that should be your first answer. Then vitamin K deficiency. Yeah, so the vitamin K factors that are dependent. So two, seven, nine, and 10. How will the patient present? Abnormal bleeding, okay? Then this one. Um, so this one I had explained last time. Uh, I'd like you guys to try. Interpret the ABO blood groups, X, Y, and Z. So cells and serum so this is positive negative positive 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 so what is x y and z
Yeah, so at least I'm seeing um, uh, people understood the concept of forward grouping. Um, so X is A positive, Y, A, B positive, and Z, B positive. Yeah, so this is forward grouping. Uh, I'd like to challenge you. What happened? What if I put here anti Sarah and here donor cells? What will X be? If here were donor cells and here were um, anti Sarah, what would X, Y, and Z be? And see the answers in the chat. Here were donor cells and here were anti Sarah. Um a, B negative, really? Uh -huh. Another answer, B positive, close. So X would be B negative. Um, what about Y? Please explain what forward and reverse grouping are. Okay, I can, I can recap. Um, okay, let me, let me recap. So um, this is blood grouping. We have ABO blood grouping. We have two. Forward or self or cell grouping and um, serum stroke reverse grouping. So I'll start with cell grouping. So for cell grouping, remember we use the serum to determine antigen on the RBC. Okay. So we're using the serum. Remember, serum has antibodies. Cells, which are the RBCs, have antigens okay so there are antigens on the surface of the red blood cells and the serum we have antibodies so for here we have antibody a and we don't know the donor cell positive means there is a reaction so if there was a reaction we knew that the antibody a reacted with the antigen on the donor cell a because we know a reacts with a b reacts with b resus reacts with the resus antigen okay so if there was a reaction, we know here there was here there was antigen A. Antibody B. Antibody B, there was no reaction, so meaning we know that antigen B is absent. Anti D. Anti D basically is the antibody D. And uh, resus is the antigen. So if it was positive, meaning that the resus antigen is positive. So this blood group will be A positive. For Y. Antibody A, which is A, reacted with Y, so there was an antigen A. Anti B reacted, so there was antigen B. And Ressa's reaction was positive. Same to Z, the reaction was at B, so B is present, so here is B positive. Now, that is cell for grouping or forward grouping. But when you do serum grouping, you'll change. So here will be serum, and here will be, will be the cells. So for the cells, you have A, B, and D, okay? So D will be Ressa's antigen. So let's reason, let's reason with X. X, if you have a cell, the antigen in the cell A and the donor cell reacted, what, what caused the reaction? If the antigen A reacted with the donor cells, sorry, the serum, what caused the reaction? It has to be an anti, anti A. If here were positive, um, so here, assuming this is the B antigen 
and there was no reaction. So there was no B antibody. Anti so here will be rhesus antigen. If rhesus antigen reacts with the reacts reacts showing that anti D, sorry, sorry. Um, um for anti so here is cells. We're assuming here is cells. And we have a rhesus antigen, isn't it? So if you have a rhesus antigen, and here will be positive, it means this rhesus antigen will be positive for here is antisera. So the rhesus antibody will be a sure reaction. So what's what blood group will that be? So X will be B negative. Yes, yes, yes. B negative. So try Y. If Y, if you are to interchange this, sorry, it's it's a, it's a little bit confusing because I'm working with uh, we are making an assumption. Maybe if I were to draw a table, it would have made more sense. Uh, but you can try Y. If you are to interchange the cells here and the antisera here, which blood group will Y be? O negative, yes. So Y will be O negative and Z. What will Z be? A negative, yes. So uh, I'm glad you've gotten it, but um, I'll attach a better picture so that you can, because here we're working on assumption, but I'm glad you've understood the concept of serum grouping and cell grouping. So, yeah. But they re I've never seen a question on reverse grouping, so I don't, maybe they can bring it. But the first thing you see in this picture, make sure you see the cells are above, the antisera, then you can reason out. Um, so note, Blood group A, B negative has no anti A and no anti B. Do not write no antibodies. Um, so this is a note you have to take. When you're asked what does blood, the antibodies that blood group A, B have, don't say there are no antibodies. You have to say it has no antibody A and antibody B. Okay? Yeah. Draw a table and interpret the expected coagulation results for the condition. So VWD and classic hemophilia. So this one I think I had explained, but um, you can you can attempt. So basically you have to say if it's prolonged or uh, it remains normal. Sorry, there's some background noise. Um, I think now it's better. 
Um, why negative? So when the arrangement changes, is it reverse grouping? Yes, when the arrangement changes, it's reverse grouping. So um, for the reverse grouping, uh, for the next session, I'm going to I'm going to put a better table. Then I'll explain from there. So um, you can hold your questions for the reverse grouping. So, um, so we can continue. Um, I hope the background noise is a little bit subsided. So VWD for the bleeding time, prolonged, normal PT, prolonged APTT. So VWD, you look at what is VWD? It's, um, dysfunction or insufficient von Willebrand's factor. And we know von Willebrand's factor binds to factor eight. And we know factor eight is in the intrinsic pathway. So we expect the APTT to be prolonged. Yes, and um, it is also a platelet disorder, so we expect bleeding time to be prolonged. PT will not be affected because it does not affect the 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 the, the, the extrinsic pathway. And then classic hemophilia, classic hemophilia normal bleeding time normal bleeding time mm -hmm. normal pt and prolonged aptt yes so prolonged aptt normal bleeding time and normal bleeding time and pt so i hope this makes sense um yeah hemophilia I'm seeing someone is asking. Hemophilia, yes. Hemo Classical hemophilia is a um, factor A deficiency. So it only affects the intrinsic pathway. So that's why we'll have a um, normal bleeding but prolonged APTT only. Mm, I'm seeing a question here. How does VWD affect platelets? So for this one, uh, I think I had explained yesterday or the day before. So we talked about uh, VWD. It causes um, dysfunctional platelet adhesion, okay? Yeah. So when you have dysfunctional platelet adhesion, we impair the primary hemostasis, okay? So that is one. And then the second way how it affects um, APTT is reduced binding to factor eight. Mm. So you decrease factor eight activity and then you impair the intrinsic pathway. Okay. Yes, uh, VWF factor helps addition of surface of disrupted vessels. Yeah. Okay, I hope that's clear. Classical hemophilia is which hemophilia? A or B? A, that is the classical one. Then B, the Christmas disease is factor nine. Um, so there's this. Um, Um, so what is this? Um, what is this? How I differentiate between Western green and Wintrobe? Um, here's a good, a good slide. So I check where is which one is closed at the end. Wintrobe. This one is open in both ends. Um, three hundred millimeters. Look at the. Calibration, 300 millimeter long glass pipette. This one is 11 centimeter long. Uniform bore with a diameter of two millimeters, blah, blah, blah. Lower mark is 180. Um, tube is calibrated in centimeters and millimeters from zero to 10. 
from 0 to 10 centimeters from above, downwards on one side to scale for ESL reading. Yeah, so basically just check where the closure, I find the closure to be easy. Yeah, so this one is open in both ends. Wester Green, Wintrobe is closed. Okay. Yeah. So measurement centimeters. This one is in millimeters. Calibration 0 to 10, open on one end. Wintrobe, Wester Green, open in both ends. Then the ESR levels are here. So normal ESR in males less than 15, females less than 20. Then list four courses of raised readings in the instrument. So you can be brought this instrument, then they'll ask what instrument is this, and then courses of raised. Um, intro has two scales, Wester Green has one, yes. Raised end and, uh, and uh, decreased. So here it is. So raised, longer column. So raised is basically the time taken to settle. So if these are the RBCs, they'll settle till here. So this is a longer column, but if it's reduced, it will settle till here. So a shorter column, okay? That's where we read here, okay? Um, so for raised ESR, longer column, we have TB, rheumatoid arthritis, pregnancy, menses, slightly old age, rheumatic fever. So inflammation, all anemias except sickle cell anemia, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, okay? Then reduced shorter column, mm, sickle cell disease, polycythemia, allergy, high altitude, young age, strenuous exercise, DIC, cholera, leukemia. So they usually ask for, so you should uh, try and remember. I'm seeing a question in the chat. Explain those readings. Don't they change on which tube was used? I don't understand that question. Um, I don't understand that question unless, Candy, if you can uh, explain to me or unmute. So basically, this is the most high yield part, okay? Yeah. Uh, what cell is this? known as a reed standberg cell, not Hodgkin cell, a reed standberg hair cell. So how do you usually know? These are, they usually say the all eye appearance. Can you see here? These two all eye appearance. The, these are the nuclei, they're usually bi, bilobed or the binuclear cell, okay? Um, so here they'll ask you, also here's another image. I guess that one. And then uh, name the cell, Rinstanberg cell, disease associated, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Then they'll ask um, two tests useful in diagnosis. So biopsy of involved lymph nodes, immunohistochemistry, bone marrow biopsy, PT scans, chest X-ray, fine needle aspiration. If they ask, start with biopsy, Bone marrow biopsy, then FNA, because this is a um, hematology. If you still write immunohistochemistry, they'll still give you correct, but st start with the hematological cells. They can even specify and say hematological cells. Okay. Um, um, an immunologic question I can ask. Um, um, which, how will I frame, how will I phrase it? In a uh, Hodgkin's cluster of differentiation, which, uh, which ones will be raised? Or which one will be positive? So is it CD, CD4, CD8, CD20, CD19, CD3, CD, which ones? 
the two that will be positive. CD15, yes, and CD30. Why? Because they are B cell origin. Okay. CD15, CD30. Yeah. It's B cell origin. Good. Um, um, yeah. Um, so, what is this? If you bring if you brought such a picture what will you write it's maybe you're told identify the above tool or instrument so it's a single blood bag i see some people are saying you say primary blood bag but if there were two would you say secondary no so it's better write single blood bag not primary blood bag okay single blood bag Anticoagulant present. So we have CPDA. Then state the functions of each component. So citrate is the anticoagulant. So uh, how I remember, remember the blue top has sodium citrate. So it's the anticoagulant. Phosphate maintain pH. So how? It lowers the acidity and have a higher concentration of 2,3 BPG. Dextrose, the source of energy for metabolism of the RBCs. Adenine provide energy in form of ATP, okay? Shelf life, CPDA, 35 days. So ways to prolong the shelf life, use SAGM, saline, adenine, glucose, manitol for 42 days, frozen at negative 70 degrees or stored in glycerol, okay? Identify the products produced. So this one is a very high yield. We already did this. Packed RBCs, FFP, cryoprecipitate, platelet concentrate, WBC concentrate. So you have to know the product, the storage conditions, and the uses. Okay. State the storage conditions. So CPDA, 2 to 8 degrees for 35 days. If you use SAGM for 42 days. Mention the volume for 50. So it's not 500. I was seeing a lot of people saying 500. This is 450 ml. Okay. Functions of the blood bank. Uh, so you can write on the chat functions of the blood bank. So blood, yeah. So um, I'd like to go through this, um, the National Blood Transfusion Service functional structure. So it's made up of National Blood Transfusion Center, Regional Blood Transfusion Center, Blood Bank, and then Blood Transfusion Units, okay? So for the National, um, think about guidelines, okay? They are responsible for guidelines. So guidelines on blood transfusion services, guidelines on um, blood donors, evaluating donors, blood testing, um, quality assurance, research, you know, all those, they provide the guidelines, okay? That's for the national. So formulating the guidelines, issuing the guidelines, all those guidelines are for the national. Regional Blood Transfusion Center, so basically these ones, they'll get the blood, okay? Um, examine the blood donor. Sorry, they get the blood donor. So these ones, they deal with the donor. So they get the blood donor. So for example, Mr. John, 
examine the blood donor. They take the donor's blood. Then they transport this donor's blood to the blood bank, okay? Have you understood? One, they get the blood donor, examine the donor, take the donor's blood, the, then they transport the donor's blood to the blood bank. Yeah, then they also manage uh, they also manage the blood donor register. So if John came to uh, donate his blood there, they manage that. So John, we know the guidelines. So how many day how many times should you donate in a year? Let's see in the chat. How many times should we start with men, then uh, women? For men? For men, four. So four, four is every three months or every four months? When you say four, do you mean four times or four every four months? Every three months, every, every three months. So every three months is four times a, a year. And for the women? And for the women, three times. So three times, so three times is every four months. Every four months. Yeah, so for men, every three months, four times a year for women, every, every, every four months three times a year yeah so uh, yeah uh, that's okay so we have ex we have explained for the regional so they get the donor examine the donor's blood taking the donor's blood and transporting the donor's blood to the blood bank and then they also manage the blood donor register okay now for the blood bank what's the first thing they'll do they will receive the donor's blood from the regional blood transfusion they will store it, okay, process it. Then they will dispense the blood. And when you dispense the blood, remember when processing, you're dispensing the blood into the whole blood and the different components and the different blood products. So maybe the WBC concentrate, the platelet concentrate, cryo, FFP, all those, all those, okay? Then they also do some researching on specific aspect of blood transfusion. So for example, reagent manufacturing, blood components and product production, okay? Then the blood transfusion unit, finally. So this is the direct link. It is the direct clinical arm of the blood transfusion practice. So what does it do? Basically just linking the donor to the recipient, okay? So if John wants to donate to maybe Mary, so the link is the blood transfusion unit, okay? Then also compatibility testing, okay? So um, I hope that makes sense. I'm seeing mobilizing donors is done in which body? Mobilizing, so regional, so it's done in the Regional, because you said regional, they get the blood, examine, take the donor's blood, then they transport. Okay, so functions of the blood bank, I think I've explained. Receive the donor's blood, storing donor's blood, processing donor blood, separating to different blood components and products, and dispensing blood. Okay, I hope that's okay. Um, um, yes, so this is uh, the pathways. So what is A, B, C, and D?
A, B, C, and D. So first of all, which pathway is this? You have to know the pathway before. You have to know the pathway before you answer the question. Which pathway? Is it extrinsic, intrinsic, or common? Extrinsic. Why? Why extrinsic? Because of the tissue injury, or if they label here, so tissue injury or damage the epithelium. Okay. So a. So what starts with the extrinsic pathway? So A is factor. Let me see the chart. Factor seven. Yes, so factor. And remember when writing these factors, you write in Roman numbers, okay? So don't write in uh, the normal numbers, write in Roman numbers. So if it's seven, V, I, I. So factor seven activates. Uh -huh. And then after factor seven. Factor seven. Then we go to the common. So the common pathway is starting around here. Factor 10. And factor 10 goes and activates what is C. Factor 2. Yes, after factor 2. So what is D? So D, D is uh, between... So what converts factor two to factor two activated? So basically thrombin. So what does that? Factor 13, you know. So factor 13 acts after factor one. Factor 10. So let's see. So we have factor seven, factor 10, factor two, and then, so D is calcium, okay? So calcium is what is required to activate from uh, factor two to factor two activated, which is thrombin, okay? Yeah, so I think I had a picture of, yeah, but we can go through this, I attached it here. So background series of steps in response to bleeding caused by tissue injury. Each step activates the next and ultimately produces a blood clot, AKA secondary hemostasis. Let me zoom. So we start with the extrinsic pathway. So damage the epithelium. We start with factor seven which goes factor three joins. So factor three is the tissue factor, which joins to factor 10. Ah, yeah. Extrinsic, extrinsic. we have factor 10, 11, 12. Factor 12 starts in the presence of collagen, calicrine, high molecular weight, K. Okay. Sorry. So this is factor 12 to factor 12 activated. Factor 11 goes to activate factor 11 to factor 11 activated. Factor 11 activated and calcium required to factor. Activate factor nine to factor nine activated. Factor eight on the side, you see, factor eight requires thrombin to activate factor eight to factor eight activated. Then they come join there. They come join factor, factor 10. Now here's where the common pathway starts. So common pathway factor 10 to factor 10 activated. We now go, so on the side we have factor five, which requires thrombin, similar to factor eight. 
for factor five activated joins in with culture factor two. So factor two to factor two activated, which is thrombin, then factor one to one activated, so fibrinogen to fibrin. Then on the side, we have stabilizing factor, which is factor 13, which also requires thrombin. To factor 13 activated, joins together calcium to form a fibrin clot. It can be quite challenging, but um, you have, uh, how I remember how I used to remember it, I used to say 12, 11, 9, 10, 8 joins on the side. And then this one, it's basically 3 and 7. Then here, we go from 10, Two, one, 10 to 1, then the clot. And then you have to remember 5 and 13 join. Okay. So take a take a minute, you internalize this. So they'll either bring the extrinsic or the intrinsic. Okay. Yeah. So coagulation disorders can either cause excessive or inadequate clotting, deficiency in one one or greater than one clotting factor. So A, factor eight is hemophilia A, that one we knew. B, factor nine. C, hemophilia C, hemophilia C, factor, this is 10, 11, factor 11. And then Volner Brown's disease D, factor eight. Remember factor eight binds to Volner Brown's. And then vitamin K deficiency that the vitamin K dependent factors, which we know are two, is two, two, seven, nine, and ten. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this one really helped. So you'll take a minute and uh, check it, check it out. Um, you want to, so this is the same question. So identify the pathway, tissue injury, you all know that it is extrinsic, and then common pathway starts around. So tissue injury, we have factor seven to seven A, then we enter 10 to 10 A, then I said 10 to one, so 10 to one. Okay, so common pathway is starting here. So if you're asked to identify the pathway, extrinsic and common, don't forget. Okay, and then um, identify the factors. So we have said, um, I think that one I've explained. So you can choose to write fibrinogen and fibrin, but I think the better thing, because you might forget thrombin is factor two activated, you might, confused so just write factor one and factor one activated yeah any question there uh do vwd and classic hemophilia present similarly so for vwd as i said um in the previous discussion vwd um is a platelet disorder and it also affects um, the intrinsic pathway, isn't it? So petechiae, pupura, um, petechiae and pupura only affect VWD, the platelet disorders, and then the rest, epistasis, uh, bleeding gums after a minor procedure, you know, bleeding from mucosal surfaces, for example, heavy menses, um, they will present both in VWD and hemophilia. But remember, hemophilia does not present with um, the petechiae. Okay. Uh, reference intervals for WBCs. We have neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes. So this is also a cramming game. Um, uh, yeah, basically, I don't know how to... You'll have to know this. Visually a formula, never let men eat bananas. That's the order of how, how, how they are. So, so never neutrophils, 40 to 75%. So two to seven times 10 power nine. So they can ask the percentage for the 
the absolute value, which is 2 to 7, 1.0 to 3.0, 0 0.2 to 1, 0 0.02 to 0 0.6, less than 0 0.1. Okay, so this is also, you also have to read it. So they can give you um, neutral fields and then they leave a blank here. Monocytes are blank, then you just fill in the blanks. Yeah, then WPPC, remember it's 4 to 11. Um, so what do we see here? Answers, what is this? What is this? And what are these? Okay, these are RBCs, but um, any pathology you see? Um, um, let me see the chat. Hypochromic red blood cells, um, yes, so these ones. Rollo, yes, so the coins, um, the coin stack appearance of the RBCs. Uh -huh. What cell is this? And what cell is this? Identify the pointed cells, the, the red one. Um, can I see a teardrop cell? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not seeing any teardrop cell. Maybe this one, but that's a, that's a catch. Lymphocyte, so someone is saying lymphocyte, hypersegmented neutrophil, lymphocytes. Plasma cell. So is it a lymphocyte or a plasma cell? Target cell. Yes, this one looks like a target cell. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. What is this? So this is basically this. So I've zoomed in. What, what are these? So is it a lymphocyte or a plasma cell? So there, plasma cells. Okay. And this role of formation, you can see clearly. So why is it a plasma cell? So um, two reasons. Look at the nucleus. It's towards the periphery of the cell. Okay. Number two, look at the cytoplasm. Compare this cytoplasm and this cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is um, slightly bluish. Okay, there's a, the cytoplasm is blue. Okay. So nucleus towards periphery of the cell, as we have said, deep blue cytoplasm. And then cytoplasm near nucleus is pale. Look at the cytoplasm near the nucleus kind of pale, but away from the nucleus is now the deep blue appearance. So that is a plasma cell. So the next question, obviously, two disorders um, or three disorders associated with increase in plasma cell. So plasma cell dyscrasias, um, multiple myeloma, yes. Uh -huh. MM, mm -hmm. Waldenstrom macroglobinemia, yes. Monoclonal gam gamopathy of undetermined significance, yes. And uh, you can also add HIV. HIV is also there. So yes, MM, plasma cell leukemia found in circulation. Waldenstrom macroglobinemia, monoclonal gamopathy of undetermined significance, and HIV. Prothrombin time test. So... So tissue thromboplastin, so this is a reagent. Say the principle of the test which the reagent is used. So tissue thromboplastin reagent, so this one, contains tissue factor, a protein that is released from damaged tissues. When added to the plasma or blood sample, 
tissue thromboplastin comes into contact with factor six, factor seven. A clotting factor present in the blood, tissue thromboplastin binds to factor seven and initiates its activation. I think we, we saw it. I think, let me go back. Yeah, where is it? Yeah. So the tissue thromboplastin reagent is bypassing this stage. So it will come, we say that it comes into contact with factor seven and then it binds factor seven, initiating the extrinsic pathway, okay? So I hope you've understood that. So if you, you can paraphrase this on your own words, but the marking point is that tissue factor comes in contact with factor seven and um, it binds to it, initiating its activation. Two clinical conditions where test is indicated. So DIC, liver disease, disorders of fibrinolysis. Yeah. Um, blood count tests. Um, so interpret this. HB of five. So is it high, is it low? WBC of five to 30, MCV of 52. So oh, let me see the chart. So HB is low, yes. WBC, five is normal, yes. Platelet to 30, normal. MCV, low. Yeah, low. So, um, so if you are to interpret this either, we said MCV is indicative of size, so if it's less than 76 or 80 femtoliters is microcytic anemia, okay? Identify the causes. So I think we classified this one well, but you can use the formula tails, tails, thalassemia, anemia, chronic disease, um, I is iron deficiency, L is lead poisoning, S is sideroblastic anemia, okay? For iron deficiency anemia, um, saying iron deficiency anemia is not, okay, it depends on the lecture they can give you, but give the cause like as much as there's iron deficiency anemia. So what happens? So bleeding, esophageal viruses, colon cancer. So this one um, for the colon cancer basically is the ulceration or maybe a polyp that has ulcerated and then you'll have um, blood in stool. So occult blood, or uh, bloody diarrhea, yeah, bleeding esophageal viruses. So this is basically, um, uh, or you can have peptic ulcer disease. You present with hematemesis. Identify the tests to be performed in these patients. So serum ion, ferritin, TIBC, PBF. So PBF, it depends if it's sideroblastic, you'll see the sideroblasts, yeah. Um, serum ion decreased, ferritin, storage form of ion decreased. TIBC, will the TIBC be increased or decreased? Will the TIBC be increased or decreased? Increased, why? Because it's the total ion binding capacity. So it's how much the body wants to bind to ion. So it will be increased. Uh, I'm seeing a question. So we just ignored the low WBCs. Um, which low WBCs? Um, the WBCs are normal. Okay. How the patient present? So basically anemia, signs of anemia, pallor, palpitation, dizziness, easy fatigability, then if you have long studying and deficiency coelinicia, as I showed you before, atrophic glossitis, angular stomatitis, yeah. So what are these X, Y, Z? Yes, they are reagents, but what are these?
Mm-hmm. Anti A, okay. Anti A, so yes, this is anti A. Y, what is Y? Anti D, you know. This is anti D and then this is anti B. So A, B, D. So uh, color code, blue A, yellow B, and ID is the colorless one. To identify the use, um, um, I think we mentioned above ABO blood grouping, so cell or serum, <laughs> serum uh, blood grouping, and then also recess, recess typing, or what's that? Least two sources of error, there's so many. I just uh, listed two, contamination of reagents, expired reagents. Uh, there's so many sources of error. Um, human error, you know, uh, yeah, you can think of a lot. So not just limited to this. Yeah. Examine the preparation A. So this is the preparation. So I want to ask you, is this a thin is this a thin blood film or a thick blood film? Thin or thick? Thick. Is this how thick looks like? Let me show you how thick looks like. It doesn't look well spread to be thin. Yes, it doesn't look well spread, but it's still a thin. This is how a thick looks like. Are you seeing? So thin, basically when preparing a thin, you usually put your, your slide here, then you slide it like this, then it spreads. But for the thick, you just put the drop and you, you let the drop there, okay? Okay, so that's the difference. The thick is usually never, 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 never spread by the slide. Okay, so this is how a thick looks like. So where were we? Um, so look at this. So is this a thick or a thin? This is a thin, but it's not well done, but it's still a thin. Okay. Now I want to ask you a question in regards to malaria. Um, what is the use of the thin and the thick blood film? So is the thick used to identify the species or number of parasites? So which one is used to identify the species? Let me ask that. The species of the parasite. So if it's pals Plasmodium falciparum or malaria or ovale, and then which one is used to count the number of, 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 of parasites? So thin species, yes. And then thick number of thick number of, of parasites. Okay. Yeah, because you know thin, you'd see uh when you see in a light microscope, you'd see the the way they have so if it's plaspodium falciparum, you remember we said the headphone appearance, you'd be able to see it. Yeah, parasitemia, thick. Yeah. Thank you. Examine the preparation A, list down two uses of the test in clinical work. So um, complete blood count, um, cell morphology, cell morphology, PPF, two stains using the preparation GEMSA and right. Okay, Coombs reagent, um, uh, it's a repeated question. Uses, 
Um, this one we went through it, hemolytic disease of the newborn, drug-induced hemolytic anemia, hemolytic transfusion reaction, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. You remember when I was explaining direct and indirect? Yeah. Um, so what are we seeing here? So these are lymphocytes for you to compare the cells. Are they larger or smaller? Some look small like this one, this one, this one. And then look hypochromic because look at the um, RBCs, how they look. So this is microcytic, hypochromic. Identify the purple cell, lymphocyte. Relevant lab investigations using the assessment of the red blood cell. PBF has already been done, don't mention it, okay? Okay, PBF has already been done, don't mention it. So if you write PBF, it'll be given a wrong because it has already been done. So ferritin, iron levels, TIBC, as we've explained. Uh, what is this? Jaundice, yellowness of the eye, scleral icteras. Yeah, all of them are correct. Hematological causes, we have a lot. Think about think about causes of hemolytic anemia. So a uh, warning, do not write hemolytic anemia. Um, that is the biggest mistake you'd ever do. Do not write hemolytic anemia because if you start writing hemolytic anemia, you have generalized because malaria causes hemolytic anemia, sickle cell causes hemolytic anemia, G6PD, all these, they cause hemolytic anemia. So identify the, the causes of the hemolytic anemia. So malaria, sickle cell anemia, G6PD deficiency, thalassemia, hereditary spherocytosis, certain drugs, there are a lot. You remember how we classified causes of hemolytic anemia? hemoglobinopathies, enzymenopathies. So you, you just mention them, okay? Identify the test to be performed. So PBF, CBC, retic count, haptoglobin levels, um, MDH levels, indirect bilirubin tests. Okay, if they say hematological, don't mention this. Start with these ones. PBF, CBC, retic, haptoglobin. And LDH. So interpret this. This is very low, 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 normal, low. So what will you call this? Pancytopenia, yes. So decrease in cell lines of all origins. So differentials. This one we have done. We have done. Nomochromic, hypochromic anemia. Yes. Um, yes, there's an anemia. It's nomocytic. Uh, Yes, but the main is it's a pancytopenia. So causes of pancytopenia, we have mentioned a lot all the time. I remember, don't say bone marrow failure. Um, yes, I'm happy no one has said bone marrow failure. So we have a plastic anemia, AML, ALL, um, advanced HIV and AIDS, myelodysplastic syndrome, chemotherapy, myelofibrosis, severe infection, sepsis, hypersplenism, some drugs. They're quite a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, when you write infection, no, for an infection, we'd expect the WBC. It unless you explain it, um, which, yeah, in an infection, the WBC count we expect it to be 
quite high. So that one, I don't think so. Hypothyroidism. Um, for hypothyroidism, that one I'm not sure. I don't know the expected lab values for hypothyroidism in regards to hematology. So that one, yeah. For if I was to tell you, just write a plastic anemia, chemotherapy, myelodysplastic syndrome, advanced HIV and AIDS. Um, yeah. Don't give the examiner a chance to rethink why they have given you correct. Infiltrating tumors to the bone marrow, yes. Um, so for here, uh, I've seen someone has asked me, um, what do we expect? Um, this John is here. What do you expect for um, retic count? Will it be increased or decreased? Let's start with, um, so it depends on the hemolysis, yes, true. Let's start with uh, intravascular hemolysis. Yes, um, true. It depends the cost. Let's start with intravascular hemolysis. Will the retic count be increased? Mm. Let's start with intravascular. Intravascular hemolysis is basically hemolysis within the blood vessels, and extravascular is um, outside of the blood vessels, most likely the spleen, okay? Yeah, so how will our retic count be in intravascular hemolysis? Increased, yes. Um, Extravascular hemolysis, retic count. Extravascular hemolysis, retic count. Increased, yes. So reticular retic count will be increased in both. Okay. Um, let's go to haptoglobin levels. Let's start with intra, intravascular hemolysis. Decreased, yes. Extravascular. The globin? Normal, yes. So that's the concept I wanted to um to explain. So you uh the question is ask yourself what is haptoglobulin? Um haptoglobin, sorry. Um how I, I know how I remember about haptoglobin, think of it as a as a, as a sweeper or as a cleaner. Okay. So what happens is when uh, when hemolysis occurs, okay, um, we know that um, hemoglobin is released, okay? So we expect to have hemoglobin, hemoglobin in blood, isn't it? So haptoglobin is now the cleaner or the, yes. So he'll come, pick up the, the, the haptoglobin and bind to it, okay? So this, this haptoglobin is a protein that will bind to the hemoglobin. Okay, yeah. So in intravascular hemolysis, where it has occurred inside the vessels, we expect the haptoglobulin levels to decrease because most of it has bound to hemoglobin. But in extravascular, extravascular, it has occurred outside the vessels. So when you're measuring the amount of uh, haptoglobulin, it will be normal. So it won't be decreased, okay? Understood? 
Yes, LDH. Um, intravascular, increased, yes. Extravascular. It will be increased, yes. So, um, LD, same to LDH. So, LDH, um, um, it will be increased, but most, uh, most prominently it will be increased in intravascular hemolysis, okay? Um, please explain, please explain your concept of extravascular and intravascular. Never understood it even from class. Okay. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so the first question is what is haptoglobin? Okay. Let me repeat. So haptoglobin, I've told you to think of it as like a cleaner or a sweeper. Okay. When when uh, hemolysis occurs, you know, hemolysis is the, uh, the breakdown of the RBCs, have to um, hemoglobin will be released, okay? So we'll have hemoglobin in, in blood. So what happens is, I've told you to think of haptoglobin as the cleaner. It will come, clean up the levels of, of, of hemoglobin. So what it does, it binds. Haptoglobin is a protein that binds to hemoglobin. So when it binds to hemoglobin, we expect the levels of haptoglobin in blood to decrease because they have already bound to the hemoglobin. So when you measure, you'll find that the levels of haptoglobin have decreased. And this is occurring in intravascular hemolysis. But in extravascular, so where the RBCs are destroyed in the spleen or outside the vessels, the levels of haptoglobin will be normal because it has not Hemolysis has not occurred inside the blood vessels, so the haptoglobin are still unbound to the hemoglobin. Okay. Um, understood. In what instances can you have intravascular and extravascular hemolysis? Um, um both intravascular and extravascular. Um, for extravascular, the first thing I'm thinking of is um, when you have splenomegaly with active hypersplenism. So that is extravascular. And then for the intravascular, um, so assuming if you have maybe G6PD deficiency, um, and, and at the same time, you have hypersplenism. Yeah, but don't worry. That's uh, You're trying to worry how the levels of haptoglobin will be. Yeah, but at least you've understood that concept of haptoglobin. Okay. Mm, I think that's okay. We, did we do this? Clinical features. So this one I told you, you think of how, so what cell line is increased, is decreased. So uh, WBC, which is one, so we expect recurrent infections. HB, which is five, so we accept, we expect uh, anemia. So you have to mention the signs of anemia, the palpitations, blah, blah, blah. RBC is also low, so anemia. Then the platelets is low, we expect. so. Easy bruising, recurrent bleeding, okay? Yeah, excessive bleeding. Mm. Test to be done, PMA, PBF, retic round. In severe blood loss, only RBC goes down, platelets and neutrophils spike up. So well, this is uh, something to note. So for example, if you have hemorrhage, you'll have the levels of RBCs, these are two, maybe 0. Point something. And then the platelets and the neutrophils will spike up. Okay. This is something to note. Mm. So what cells are these?
target yes so this this i usually remember this like a summer target here you're aiming for target target cell conditions thalassemia asplenia sickle cell hpc disease liver disease and deficiency anemia they're quite a lot um so here Mm, what is this? First of all, um, before you, yeah, you write the answers, please don't mention Klima, Salah, Jamshidi. Please just don't. Uh, so identify if it's either used in trephine or bone marrow, uh, bone marrow aspirate. So there are only two choices. It's if it's either bone marrow or a trephine needle. Don't identify if it's Klima or whatever. The brand name is not important. So this one, it's a trephine. Why? Uh, okay, we start with this one. This one is for BMA because of this. So you can imagine when you're pushing to the to get into the, the bone marrow, this is like a stopper. So imagine you're pushing this. This is the stopper. And then for trephine, um, it has this. So in taking a trephine, it has this. So Check for the stopper. So this is trephine and this is BMA. Indications, quite a lot too. Uh, pyrexia of unknown origin, fever of unknown origin, a suspected multiple myeloma, unexplained splenomegaly, unexplained pancytopenia, myelodysplastic, infection, staging of lymphoma. There are quite a lot. I haven't even exhausted the list, but um, yeah, they last me before. So you have to know this for. Then state the contraindications. So for here, um, something you should know is thrombocytopenia is not a contraindication. That's the most important thing, especially in MCQs. You might be asked um, the following are uh, contraindications of maybe uh, 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 a trephine biopsy except so you may be given DIC, VWD, hemophilia A, hemophilia B, and thrombocytopenia. So remember, thrombocytopenia is not a contraindication. These other ones are contraindications. Then sites, um, I remember how Adnan explained these ones well. The older you get, the further you get to 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 is it um the pelvis. So for a two-year-old tibial tuberosity, 15-year-old posterior superior, adult posterior superior, extremely obese, anterior superior. Trephine is always done on the posterior superior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing time is not on our side, but this can be our last question. What is this? What is this preparation? PBF, is this a PBF? If it's a PBF, which cells can you see? Cycling test. Yes, this is a cycling test. This is how cycling test is done. Um, so the next question about cycling test, you'll have to identify is it a definitive or is it a screening test? Cycling test, a definitive or screening? Screen? Screening. Yes. Um, so basically, it doesn't tell you if the person has sickle cell anemia or the sickle cell trait. So it's only used for screening. And then um, they usually ask which um, chemical is added to speed up the to speed up the results. Mm, yeah, sickling test. So screen. 
what is SDS? I don't know what SDS is. Uh, so the name of the chemical is metabisulfite. Yes. Um, don't know what is SDS unless you can tell us that sickle cell, what sickle disease? I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, I think I think we can stop from there. Um, tomorrow is Wednesday. Um.